Welcome. Today's uh, uh, POP webinar. Um, my name is Bernd Moore uh, from the Jülich Supercomputing Center in Germany. And uh, I got invited uh, to talk to you about our Scalaska performance analysis tool, which is very scalable and it's uh, helpful for uh, doing parallel performance analysis of HPC applications. Um, and today I want to cover it how this tool can be used for uh, doing POP assessments uh, with uh, POP metrics, but also uh, how a more detailed analysis uh, can be done. Uh, the Scalaska uh, tool doesn't work by itself. It, it needs other components. Um, and uh, this is, I call the SCORE P tool ecosystem. It's basically a set of uh, tools which work together uh, to do various aspects uh, of performance analysis. Um, it starts with the SCORE P tool, which is an instrumentation and measurement tool. Uh, which basically allows you to instrument an application and then uh, uh, do uh, profile measurements or trace measurements. And the profiles uh, are recorded in a format called uh, Cube 4 and the trace format is called OTF2, Open Trace Format 2. Uh, we can also record hardware counter and for that we use the, the Puppy tools. Uh, if you want to look at one of these uh, profile reports, you use the Cube uh, result browser from the Scalaska uh, toolset, or you can use also the browser Paraprof uh, from the Tau uh, tools. Um, the next thing you can do is uh, do a specific trace analysis with the Scalaska uh, uh, tool, which I will explain more in, 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 in the course of this presentation, which generates an enhanced profile, which again, of course, can be viewed by Cube and Tau Paraprof. Uh, you can also visualize the traces. Uh, OTF2 uh, format can be visualized by the Vampire uh, trace visualizer. And there's uh, also a mode where the, the Cube browser can be used as a, a remote guidance uh, tool to find specific sections in the trace. Um, the profiles can be also loaded in the Tau Perf Explorer database, uh, which allows you to basically upload multiple measurements and then uh, perform analysis um, based over a whole series uh, of experiments like uh, scaling uh, experiments and stuff like that. So as I said, these work together. And so before we go into details and, and tell you more about Scalaska, uh, a few sentences about the different um, components. So first is Scorpi. As I explained, it's a performance instrumentation measurement for parallel application. Uh, you can download it from scorpi.org. And it's an open source uh, uh, community project developed by many people, but the main developers are the Technical University in Dresden and my team at the Hülich Supercomputing Center. It provides the typical uh, functionality for an HPC performance tool. Yeah, you can uh, analyze CC++ Fortran and to some extent also Python uh, applications. Uh, you have use a various methods to instrument the code. So we can instrument uh, uh, multi-process paradigms like MPI and Shmem. Uh, we can handle thread parallel paradigms like OpenMP and POSIX threads. A few of uh, accelerator-based uh, paradigms, OpenACC, CUDA, OpenCL, and COCOS. And then, of course, we record additional information like hard and software counters, I.O. behavior, memory behavior, and so on. And you can co combine that in, in any way. And as I explained already, yeah, you can either generate a profile in the cube format or uh, a trace uh, in the OTF2 format. And uh, uh, one important aspect of SCORP is it's highly scalable. So you can measure hundreds of not thousands or tens of thousands of, of uh, ranks and, and threads uh, with the tool. Uh, this is uh, how the trace visualization with Vampire looks like. Uh, uh, it's a commercial tool developed by the Technical University of Dresden. You can 
uh, get it from vampire.oi. And as usual, uh, yeah, time goes from left to right, and, and, it, and it shows a timeline for every process and thread, and uh, the different color indicating the, the different uh, areas of the code which are currently executing, or it shows uh, hard and software calendars over time, uh, and has all kind of statistics. Uh, 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 Windows 2, like down on the right side, the communication matrix and so on. And of course, as usual, if a specific uh, portion of a trace is interesting, you, you can zoom in and get more details uh, about it. And as everything is synchronized, so once you zoom in in the uh, main timeline, all the other like statistics windows and, and, and uh, counter display values uh, zoom in on the same thing as well. Uh, I mentioned Tau. This is like a very old and, and uh, a very uh, uh, powerful tool. They support lots of things. They have different ways of profiling and tracing. They support all kinds of forms for instrumentation, source code, binary, dynamic, uh, uh, sampling, and so on. Um, beyond the usual C, C++, Fortran support, uh, Java and Python, and then uh, like as usual, the, a wide range of uh, uh, paradigms are supported uh, here. You can get it from Tau Organ at you, and it's also open source. Because it supports, uh, supports so many different things, a lot of people call it the uh, Swiss Army knife of uh, Tau performance, uh, of uh, performance analysis. Um, but because it's now developed over yeah, almost 30 years and so many things got added. So it's more like a Swiss Army like a knife like that. But if you uh, need some very specific uh, uh, things, it's, you can typically find it in Tau. And finally, Skalaska, the, the topic of today's uh, talk, is also an open source application developed in, in Ulic at my team. You can find uh, and can download it and find documentation at skalaska.org. And uh, Skalaska stands for Scalable Analysis of Large-Scale Applications. So uh, scale appears twice. So for us, it's very important that uh, our tools also work on, on very large uh, computers and on very large applications. Yeah, and what does uh, Skalaska do? It, it instruments C, C++, and Fortran parallel applications. It's using Scorp for that. And then, uh, as I explained already, Scorp can generate a, a call path, which you can then analyze with our uh, browser called Cube, which you see down here on the right. Or, as I explained already, we have this event trace analysis, basically, which goes through uh, processes with trace in parallel, which makes it scalable. And then does this rate state analysis, a uh, root cause analysis, critical path analysis, and other stuff, and uh, provides that. And, and uh, what that means and what uh, what it how it can help you, uh, I show later. Yeah, and the, the Q browser, as you see on the down right, uh, uh, has typically three windows. On the left side, there's the different metrics which we are collecting. So it basically it shows the problems uh, which can be in the code. Um, and then in the second uh, panel, you see the, the call tree of your program. And once you select a metric on the left side, you see how this metric is distributed over the call tree. Uh, but again, we will see a, a nice example later. And on the right side, you see more information about uh, uh, where in the system, so which rank, which process, which node, um, and so on. It's going on. Okay, so that basically was the big context, uh, how the different components work together. And now let's have a more detailed look at the workflow when you use the Skalaska uh, tool. So it starts with the instrumentation. So uh, we instrument the source code of the application and basically uh, you run it through the, uh, yeah, you typically compile and, and instrument things to get an instrumented executable. Um, this compiling and linking step is wrapped by an instrumenter uh, in order to achieve that. Then you basically run that instrument executable, yeah, typically in parallel. Yeah, it, as I said, it has the instrument application, uh, but also contains the, uh, the measurement library uh, to record everything and uh, if necessary hardware counter library and in a normal mode you get this uh, profile um, 
as I explained before, now uh, you can further manipulate that profile, uh, like in, enrich it with derived uh, metrics, uh, cut out specific pieces and so on if necessary, and then you use our cube profile browser to look at it. Um, what we typically do is that we do a first uh, profile measurement and then see basically is, is there too much overhead or uh, which portion uh, is interesting of a program and then we use this information to uh, come up with a second more optimized uh, a measurement where we filter out uh, small unused functions and stuff like that and then with this more optimized one then we do a trace because they, these can get uh, typically uh, quite quickly very large and uh, so as I said, it, it, it's important that you do like a, a, a profile first to, to make sure the, the measurement setup is, is correctly. On this trace file, you run in the, the parallel trace analysis, get this enhanced uh, trace analysis profile, which again, you can look at it uh, with our browser. Here, uh, basically, again, the, the names of the tools mentioned, yeah, the instrumenter is called SCORP. Uh, which basically has two portions, the, the actual instrumenter and then the, the measurement library, um, the hardware calendar library uses PAPI, uh, the trace analysis is called Scalaska and uh, the tools and the browser for uh, looking at these uh, uh, Cube 4 profiles is called Cube. Um, in order to make it uh, simple uh, to use the tools, we provide uh, wrapper commands. Uh, yeah, so for instrumentation, what you basically do, you prepend the, the score P tool in front of every uh, link and uh, compile command. Yeah, so instead of doing MPI CC something, you say score P MPI CC and so on. So you just basically change a variable in the make file typically uh, from the book compiler name to score P compiler name and then uh, recompile and, and then this score P wrapper tool takes care of all the necessary instrumentation. The same for measurement, yeah, like you typically do uh, like uh, uh, a parallel HPC application, typically MPI plus something. So you run it and start it with MPI run, MPI exec or S run or whatever your launcher is. And again, you just prepend scan in front of it. So it says scan MPI exec, and then this basically uh, makes sure it, it generates the necessary measurement, sets up everything and generates a profile. If you want to do a trace measurement, you just say uh, scan dash Q dash T, MPI exec or S run and so on, and it would get a trace. And then the, the post-processing and the launching of the Q browser, you just say square and the name of a measurement directory, which gets generated by uh, the scan command. This is basically the rough uh, workflow, how you do either a profile or trace measurement. So the first thing I want to show you basically what we did in uh, during the POP uh, project, how to enhance our uh, tools so that the POP assessments which were developed during the POP projects uh, based on the POP metrics uh, can be done very easily with, with our tools. Yeah, And just as a uh, repetition. Uh, I can't go into the details here. Uh, there's a set of POP metrics developed by the POP project. You find all the information here on the URL on the top right. Uh, there were a first set of metrics developed, uh, which were basically for MPI uh, in the first phase of a project from 2015 to 18, and now in the second phase of a project in the last uh, uh, basically two and a half years, we developed uh, an enhanced. Uh, methodology for hybrid met, uh, metrics and you find all the things here if you go to that website if you want to more read about it i i suggest to go to the first uh, uh, which is basically a longer article explaining the original metrics and the new hybrid metrics if you're more a visual type and, and try to listen uh, uh, just a few weeks ago we had a webinar introducing uh, how these metrics are working. So uh, uh, you can just use basically the link down here, which gets you to a recording of, uh, 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 of that webinar. Here, just as, as just to give an idea, I don't, as again, I don't have the details to go in, with, uh, I don't have the time to go into details here, is this is basically the original POP1 uh, metrics. Uh, and you see it's basically, uh, 
calculating different efficiencies which capture the basic uh, uh, performance behavior of a parallel application yeah, determined by how communication is handled, how the load balance is handled, and the computation is done by looking at uh, IBC and instruction scaling. And then for uh, uh, hybrid metrics, uh, we have actually two versions. On the right side with a multiplicative version, which works very much like the original one, just enhanced uh, uh, basically uh, with additional uh, hybrid uh, things. And then there's a second uh, uh, kind of uh, orthogonal way, which is, is more um, uh, based on inefficiencies, which kind of uh, add up. So basically the different components uh, basically indicate the different inefficiencies, which, inefficiencies which can occur uh, um, either in the process or in the thread in the OpenMP part and, and allow you to um, okay um, if you want to do that um, in um, do that measurement uh, yeah uh, as I explained already in the workflow first you have to instrument the application yeah by providing uh, P as a prefix to the commands and then uh, um, uh, done. Do a first uh, uh, measurement uh, with scan to set up the parameters, do the filtering, and so on. And once you're done, when you are set to do the uh, pop metrics measurements, uh, you have to do two measurements here. Uh, you have to form a, a trace measurement uh, to capture all the necessary metrics for the parallel efficiency, and then you have to do a profile measurement with suitable hardware counters. Uh, uh, to collect uh, all the uh, metrics for the computational scaling. Uh, so to make it easy, that yeah, like you have to do two measurements and have to you have to know which counters and in which way. So we introduced uh, what we call a preset. Uh, so basically, by by calling scan dash p pop, uh, the scan command knows oh it's a pop uh, metrics measurement and it does for you automatically these two measurements for you setting the right hardware counters and so on. Once you're done, yeah, like you have everything collected in, in, a, in a directory, so then you have to merge these two uh, trace and uh, profile measurements together, do the post-processing to uh, do the uh, uh, computation of derived metrics and so on, and then you can look at it uh, uh, with a cube advisor. Uh, this is done with a square command. So it's basically, yeah, once you have set it up, uh, a measurement, it's done by scan dash, dash p pop, and then uh, square, you can look at it. Um, in order uh, to do that, uh, like especially like this orange part, like this preset pop and the cube advisor, these uh, got added in the latest version, which is available uh, since a few weeks. So in order to do that in this simple manner, as shown here, you have to have Scalaska version 2.6 and the latest version of cube, which is 4.6. And basically, this is basically now how it looks like. Yeah, on the right side you have a cube advisor, uh, and in order to, uh, yeah, it has different. Uh, uh, the cube tool has different views here on the right side. Uh, the advisor can be found here by using on the right side when you uh, click the channel tab, and when the advisor shows up. Um, uh, the next thing you will want to do here is on on the top uh, left is uh, select one of the metric sets. Yeah, like the original. Uh, pop one metric or the additive or uh, multiplicative uh, pop metric set and then uh, you go to your call tree select the portion which is most interesting to you like here in that case I, I selected the main loop uh, you click here on, on recalculate and then it basically shows you all the, the necessary uh, uh, results basically from this uh, pop metrics calculation yeah, and you see here overall the parallel efficiency is uh, good. Yeah, it's 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 zero point six. The best one would be one, and um, and as it splits basically in in process efficiency and thread efficiency. Thread efficiency is very good, but the process efficiency is not so good. So it indicates here that it has some issues in with this specific example, more coming from the MPI side. And then you could uh, look deeper. 
uh, into a measurement uh, on what the source of it is. Okay, so that basically was a very quick and and uh, introduction how you can use the, the Scorpi and Sklaska toolset how to do a pop metrics measurement. Of course, then you would have to do it for different number of processors and compare it uh, to see basically how these metrics uh, scale over yeah over number of processors and so on. What you typically do also uh, you need that uh, to calculate the instruction, the IPC and, and instruction scaling uh, things. Okay, um, but yeah, like uh, it could be, of course, that you are more interested in, uh, like once you found out, like in this case here, it's an MPI problem, what actually, where does it come from? And and of course, as like uh, Skalaska has a long history and, and does uh, a lot of things. And, and what I want to explain to you now is the, the idea behind the, the Skalaska tool and, and how it can be used to do an, an, an detailed analysis. Yeah, like what people typically do with traces is do this uh, trace visualization, as I showed with the Vampir tools, there's other uh, tools out there, like the Paraware tool from Barcelona and other Intel trace uh, uh, collector and analyzer. And and like here, it's a, an example from an uh, example from an MPI class yeah, where the students get told to make a, a program which sends a message around in a ring, yeah, and and then you measure and visualize that you can nicely see it here, yeah. So process zero sends a message to one, then to two, and so on, all the way to the bottom where the last process sends it back to uh, process zero. And before the, the message, everyone is basically in receive, waiting for the message. Then there's, there's a small portion in the middle. Uh, and then they, they're, once they're done, they all go into finalize. So as a, people like that, and, and you can nicely see what's going on. But um, everyone who have used these tools on some larger application uh, and, basically know that it's sometimes not as simple. Uh, yeah. So here it's not like even a, a very large program. This is just 64 processes. Yeah, and you see lots of things going on. All the black lines are messages. All the purple lines are collective operations. And okay, we see here in the middle, there's probably some imbalance so we can zoom in and look deeper, but you will find more messages and, and so on. And especially if you have uh, a program which has like little problems distributed all over, it might be hard to find them all. And, and it could be that you think, oh, did I really zoom in everywhere which is necessary? And you get, might get the impression uh, that I, I missed something. And and then that's not everything. Yeah? It's not just the timeline windows. These tools typically also have associated uh, statistics to uh, uh, windows and there's context menus where you can figure uh, to, that the views work in different ways or they have different configuration files. So yeah, it's, it's as we said, it's uh, uh, a picture says more than 1,000 words, but what if you have like multiple pictures with multiple, multiple uh, versions of it and at some point you get lost. And so uh, I think it was 2000, uh, 2005 to six when we started with Skalaska tools said, like, can we do better? And the idea here is basically, you know, like uh, we know MPI for a while, we know OpenMP for a while. So why not just uh, think about what are the most, uh, uh, important issues you can have with MPI, yeah, and then we just have a tool looking for it, yeah. So here's like one example. Uh, again, basically, like here you see, uh, basically all every routine is uh, doing the uh, working on the Velo routine, and then they they do some exchange of messages, but because the the load is not e e uh, equally distributed, the last process, process seven, is done early and goes into receive waiting for another process to send a message, yeah? And and basically all that portion until the messages come is kind of wasted. It's just blocked waiting and it could do, do something else. We call this a situation late sender, as you can imagine. And basically what, as I said, what we did for Skalaska is made a catalog of all these different issues, which all have a name. Um, there's also documentation which explain basically what the, the issue is, and each of them also defines what is the portion which is wasted or um, it's, it's lost. 
Yeah, and then basically what Skalaska is doing is basically it goes through a trace, looks for these patterns, and then it counts them, and then basically says, okay, we found 10,000 instances of late sender, and because of that, you lost so and so much time, and we found so and so much instance of that problem, and it then you lose so and so much time, and so we can rank them depending on the the, the time you're losing, and you can look at it uh, one by one, and then uh, hopefully it's a little bit easier. Yeah, here's uh, some other examples. Yeah, on the top left is the late sender I already explained. On the top right is uh, uh, co corresponding situation late receiver. So you have uh, uh, blocking sends. Basically, uh, the same thing can happen. But the send is waiting for the receiver before it actually transmits a message. Or uh, very uh, typical is waiting in front of barriers or other synchronizing. Uh, collective operations, they are basically all but the last process who enters this collective operation are, are wasting time. Or when you look at the top uh, uh, on the bottom left, there's a more complicated situation. And if you look careful, um, on the bottom is basically the late sender as above. But in addition to the late sender, it's that's the situation that the receiver process on the bottom is actually looking for two messages but it it looked in them on the wrong order. If he would have received from, uh, would have tried to receive the top message first and then the second, it would have been done much, much earlier. So um, what we basically, by defining more and more complicated patterns, yeah, we cannot basically say, oh, this is a late sender problem, but we can also say, oh, this is a late sender because you looked for a wrong message and so on. And, and this allows us to look for more and more uh, uh, detailed uh, messages. And then, of course, uh, there's a similar set for, for OpenMP and, 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 and other uh, program paradigms. And here, basically, this is basically how it looks like. Basically, when you look in the cube at the result, uh, this is an example of like a real large-scale application. It's the community Earth system model of a sea ice module. So it's the module who does the uh, simulation of ice, uh, uh, yeah, how ice is developing uh, for climate. And um, as you see, based on the left pane, yeah, like uh, it, um, there's a uh, quite uh, some time here in late senders. And then and if I click on this, like what I did here, then it basically shows where late senders occurs in the call tree. Um, and of course you can, in large call trees, uh, you can quickly get lost with all these uh, uh, lines and all the numbers. You're using a color scale uh, and the more reddish the, the box in front of a number is the higher the number, and this allows you, if there's basically one or two uh, uh, cases where, the, where it happens most, you quickly find them. In that case, it's very simple. If there's one place, it's like uh, waiting for messages in the MPI wait all, uh, which was called from the ice boundary calculation, and, and where you see this and so on. Yeah, and then you see how, when you click on this uh, um, on the, this weight all, you see how it's distributed over all the different uh, nodes and processes and so on. But this was a 4,000 process uh, uh, measurement, uh, so of course this doesn't show you very much. This is why why we often use uh, topologies. Uh, uh, like here uh, is like a very nice uh, uh, example because that uh, CIS module application uh, sets up a, a topology uh, which basically represents the, the domain where it's working on, which is the, the map of the Earth. And basically here, like every little, little uh, square is representing a processor working on that portion uh, of the map. And now we can see basically how we're waiting this late sender waiting here, the MPI wait all is distributed over processors uh, in kind of over the map. And, and of course, you nicely see here, of course, yeah, because at the equator, there's not much ice, that basically the, the waiting time here is it's much higher than in the polar region, which is uh, doing that. Of course, not all uh, applications have such uh, a built-in uh, topology. Um, but uh, for that case, we also show like hardware topologies uh, or we have like a, a virtual topology where we just show like the, the process time threads. And so you see also in a, in a graphical manner how uh, the, the, the 
whatever metric is distributed um, over the processes and threads and you see differences easily. Okay, so that basically was the, the basic idea. Yeah, uh, as we, uh, you, you run the application, we look for that pattern, and then uh, bes besides telling you basically where you, uh, where you spend the time or uh, uh, other hardware counters and how they're distributed over the, the call tree, it also shows you how specific problem cases like late senders or waiting at uh, barriers or something are distributed where they are happening and you can quickly find them. But of course, uh, these problems like late sender, they are actually not the problem, they are actually the symptom, yeah? If you think about carefully, yeah? Like the problem is not that you're waiting, but that there was some load balance, in uh, load imbalance in front of it, which caused uh, basically that waiting. And, um, and in many cases, it typically happens directly before, but it could be in complicated codes that the load imbalance happened much, much earlier. And so, um, we basically enhanced our uh, uh, searching pattern search basically. Every time we, uh, we have these patterns, we kind of search backwards basically where the, the cause for that uh, uh, waiting or, or blocking comes from. And we call that the root cause analysis. Yeah, like here, see the timeline on the bottom. Yeah, so here you see basically there's a function foo which is executed on the, on the preprocessors and, and A takes much longer. So here's the imbalance happening. And another uh, function uh, is called bar, but it's actually balanced. So each takes the same time and then they send messages. And then here basically you see these uh, late patterns uh, as detected. Yeah, so basically the, the, the normal analysis of Skalaska determines, okay, here is the blocking times uh, through these late centers. But now, as I said, we can go backwards. So from the uh, last uh, uh, late center, we can, we can determine that that portion of the waiting is actually not a direct waiting, but it's waiting from another uh, late center. So it's kind of an indirect waiting. And then going back, we actually can say, okay, the, the indirect weight is caused not by bar, but by foo. And that's the portion of foo, which is basically imbalanced, which causes a delay. Yeah, and and again, this is available then in our browser. Yeah, so uh, like uh, going down in the metric list, you see here the weight states and then there's the direct waiting time. So when you click on it, you see there how the di direct waiting time, how large it is and how it's uh, done. And you see like the, the most direct waiting is in, in the uh, polar region, of course, because there uh, uh, you wait for an imbalance of the calculation. Um, the indirect waiting is uh, in the equator region, waiting for the weight states which were caused uh, in the polar region. And now the interesting question actually comes, where did the, the delay come from? And, and of course, we all expected this were the, the calculation in the polar regions. But uh, actually, we had a, it was a surprise here. We found out the, the most waiting time which caused the imbalance was around islands. Like you see here a little bit on, the, uh, perhaps you can see it's, it's not uh, very uh, precise, but it's around Japan, Aleuts, and other things. So there was a bug in the program which uh, had the effect that calculation on complicated uh, island uh, boundaries took very long and which basically uh, uh, triggered it. And um, so you see the combination of automatic looking for patterns and the right uh, analysis and um, the right visualization. You can uh, use uh, uh, a tool to, to, to nicely find uh, uh, bugs. This of course is a very, like, as I said, it's our, uh, Nicest examples, uh, in other cases, it might not uh, as easy, but uh, it still would sh should, uh, you should be able to find blocked and waiting times uh, in your code very quickly with uh, Skalaska's analysis. Okay, I, I mentioned uh, multiple times that uh, we have scalable in the name twice, and, um, and so we are, um, really want to take care that we can also run it on very large scale programs. And, and so how far did we get? So this is basically our, uh, I call it the world record because I don't know of any other tool who published and, 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 and uh, told me about um, 
basically this was uh, a measurement on our uh, blue gene uh, Q system we had in ULIC uh, a while ago. Um, and it was a measurement on the uh, neck bone uh, application, which is part of a coral benchmark. And we used our uh, full machine and um, which were basically 20 out 28,000 nodes and each has uh, 20, uh, 64 cores. So in total it was 1.8 uh, million uh, uh, course we did measurement and yeah it it still works uh, of course like a, a topology display uh, is not very useful here so we have other ways like showing violin plots or box plots you show the distribution and even on these very large scale measurements you find basically that there's a large time uh, uh, spent in this critical region and where it happens and how much it is and so on yeah you know? and um uh, in that case, you can imagine, uh, because you, you record the, the trace for every core uh, with or, uh, multiple uh, terabytes of trace data, a few million events, but because our measurement and also the analysis is done in parallel and you use the parallel computer, supercomputer itself, uh, it's still working. So you might want to say, okay, you did it yourself and, and you know your tool, uh, but we also have users, you know, uh, uh, not basically, uh, members of our team who do large-scale uh, uh, measurements. Like here's an example from Itaru Kitayama from Riken. Um, he used our tool on the K computer also, and he measured a, a neural nest work simulator called Nest. Again, he used the full uh, K computer to do it and in total it was uh, 663,000 threads. And again, uh, could use, uh, could do that. Okay, that basically what what I want to basically tell you. It was like a very quick uh, run through how Scalasa can be used to do uh, pop measurements, uh, but also more detailed analysis in a scalable way. Of course, it was lots of details. The, the most Im important things I want you to remember is basically that yeah, Scalasa is a very useful tool for parallel analysis. It can do simple pop assessments based on the pop metrics. Uh, now with this new uh, very easily done with a new preset for the scan command and the cube advisor, but it allows also to do uh, advanced performance analysis. Uh, uh, you can look basically down uh, to every metric on every core uh, everywhere in the call tree, and it works on, on really large scales. Okay, you might uh, say, okay, that must be interesting. How can I learn more about it? Or I really want to see how it works. Uh, you can actually go to uh, our online training modules you find uh, on our POP website and then we have like three 20 minute units, one basically explaining to you how to install these tools, uh, one basically how to do a measurement with Scopy and Scalaska and a third one which uh, explains better uh, how to use the Q browser and so on. If you uh, are new to this and want to hear uh, more, uh, want to learn more about uh, the POP metrics, uh, as I said, there was uh, just a few weeks ago, there was a webinar about it. Uh, you can read it or you go to the website, as explained earlier, and uh, uh, read about it. Um, oops, sorry. If you uh, say, oh yeah, that's uh, too short and I want uh, need more training how to use these tools and so on, uh, we uh, here's some upcoming training. So in, together with uh, VH, VHBS, Virtual Institute High Productivity, the supercomputing, we, we organize tuning workshops where uh, the different tools are uh, introduced and, and explained and then you uh, have some time that you basically use the tools on your own uh, codes and, and the tool experts help you with that. So the next one is actually coming up in June, um, but basically they typically happen every like three or four times a year uh, and you find them uh, under VHBS under training. Or um, if you are really uh, interested in how to do uh, these uh, POP methodology measurements uh, with different tools, not just Kalaska, but also like the Barcelona tools, Extra B, 
and, and uh, Paraware. We have a tutorial at ISC, a half-day tutorial, determining parallel application execution efficiency and scaling using a pop methodology by Houdit from Barcelona and Brian from my team. Uh, but uh, it's ISE, so uh, you would have to pay for it, but uh, it's certainly worth the money. Okay, uh, that was it. Uh, thank you for listening in. And um, here is, uh, yeah, like how to found the pop websites, how to contact us. You can follow us on Twitter. And uh, if you look for other, like the online training or other webinars, uh, uh, go to our uh, pop HPC channel on, on YouTube. Okay, uh, thanks for listening. And I see already uh, we have a few uh, questions coming in. So let me go through it. So uh, Pramod Kumbar asked a question, a bit high level question about instrumentation versus sampling. With the complexity of languages like modern C++, do you think source instrumentation becoming more difficult and sampling would become a more requirement for larger C, C++ apps? That's a very good question. And uh, that's basically the, the issue uh, you run first into when you use a tool like Scalasco does a source code instrumentation because uh, by default it instrument every little function and depending on the compiler which we use for instrumentation uh, like every little method gets instrumented and the overhead gets gets way too high uh, so this is why it requires uh, a careful uh, potentially manual instrumentation of uh, the uh, like a function source code or something. Um, sampling is working out too, but of course you only get the, yeah, when you sample, you go to only get the information basically where, uh, basically when you do it based on time, you get only time information um, and you lose all the additional information uh, like, uh, yeah, about MPI and OptMP specifics or something. So, um, some tools like Tau can combine um, uh, that basically that, uh, the, the functions itself uh, get sampled, but the, the uh, large scale or the higher level uh, parallel stuff uh, like MPI and OpenP gets, gets uh, instrumented. Um, we also had a mode like this uh, in, in SCORP, but uh, uh, we never got it uh, running uh, uh, nicely. And, and so we kind of stopped doing that. Okay, there's a second question from Pramod. In case of sampling trace based uh, sampling based traces, are there additional challenges for Lasker trace analysis? So the, the as I said, uh, Scorpi doesn't support that sampling uh, uh, very much, and of course the trace analysis. Uh, would still work in if we would, as I said, if Scorpi would support it in the measurement, because in that mode, as I explained, where the MPI and OpenMP stuff is still uh, kind of uh, not sampled, but basically uh, this information is is recorded by instrumentation, and basically the the function sampling basically just gives you the the context and and where it happens or something. In that case, it would work. Just uh, as I did uh, in the current uh, version, it really uh, doesn't uh, because Scorpi doesn't support it well. Then we have a question from Rashawn Knapp. Uh, do you have an example, contrived or real, of application which behaves well according to parallel efficiency, close to one for all metrics, as reported by the advisor component? Um, yeah, we we have a few, but they are typically uh, uh, the benchmarks, yeah. So if you use uh, the NAS benchmarks or uh, the one I showed uh, was the uh, uh, tea leaf uh, uh, power benchmark, and if you run them in an optimized way, um, it it gets close to 99 in for most cases or something. Uh, uh, of course, uh, we also have seen it for real applications uh, after we did all the optimization and got rid of the performance metrics that we also got uh, uh, up to uh, like 95 and higher. Yeah. Uh, 
especially if you run just on a node and in smaller uh, uh, measurements, uh, it's not too bad. Yeah, of course, the, the large, uh, the more nodes and the more cores you're using, the, the more synchronization and weighting you have, and then of course your efficiency goes down. But this is exactly what the efficiency is for, basically, like a watch level. Basically, uh, it's not working efficiently anymore, and and uh, the metrics then show you quickly, uh, basically when it happens and and what portion of it uh, happens. And we have a question from Piero Lanukara. Uh, very nice and interesting talk. Thank you. What about metrics for I/O and accelerated part of application? Are available pop metrics suitable for this purpose? Um, so the, inside the, the project, uh, we are uh, did uh, a discussion basically how we can extend the metrics. I know that they are already working for a while to uh, 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 include I/O in it. Uh, a second portion um, which we are currently discussing is how vectorization uh, metrics basically also can come in. Because yeah, basically uh, with the acceleration portion, but also the, the many cores, uh, the more and, and the, the vectorization uh, instructions on the processors, this gets very important. So this is worked on, but it's not there yet. Um, I have seen also with uh, the Paravir tool uh, using um, the, the hybrid metrics on, on MPI plus, plus CUDA measurements. So it works to some part by basically uh, saying, yeah, like the MPI portion, yeah, and, and then the FRED portion, the OpenMP portion is, is the, the CUDA portion. So to some sense, the metrics can uh, also be. Uh, used here, but uh, as I said, it's, it probably needs more investigation from our side, and and so currently, uh, it's it's not possible. So uh, hi, it's quite simple with a make file, but do you have an idea how to compile the CMake? Uh, uh, this is from Monher Checky. Yeah, this is a, a, a well-known uh, issue uh, when. Um, when you look at uh, on the Vampire side, uh, which also uses the Scorpi measurement, there's an FAQ actually explaining it. So we have simple wrappers, basically, um, which uh, basically you, you, you configure your application with these wrappers. And these wrappers, basically, depending on the set of an environment variable, just basically uh, expand to using the normal compiler. And by setting the uh, environment variable differently, it, it does the, the, the instrumentation. And so during the configure phase, you set the environment variable uh, to uh, basically pass through and, and the other one, and then through the actually uh, compiling, you, you, you set the environment variable and then it, it, it does it. And through this little wrapper trick, uh, you can have uh, it also working with CMake. Um, and then, at least for now, a final question from Sohail Soltani. I tried to trace an MPI-based library with Scorpi, but it failed complaining about Scorpi being compiled with static libraries. All for both Scorpi module on the HPC system and the library compiled with shared libraries. Any hints about a possible solution would be very much appreciated. Hmm. This is a good question, uh, but without seeing the exact uh, uh, um, error message and, and the situation. I like basically out of uh, out of the blue. I cannot give you an answer here. I suggest that you write an email to the Scorpi uh, uh, bucklist. Uh, uh, I need to look it up uh, in a minute, and or well, you should find it on the Scorpi website and, and basically send it submit to them, and then someone uh, will help you. Okay, so I think um, I answered uh, all the questions coming in. So thanks for staying with me and uh, listening to me. I hope uh, you enjoyed that talk. Yeah, if if you liked it, uh, thank you very much. Um, and as I said, if you're interested in more, uh, don't forget to look up our the Pop HPC channel on on YouTube. Thank you very much. Bye bye. <laughs>